Good morning everybody. This is D. Rajashekhar, lecturer in botany, Srimati Kangani Nikalyani Government Degree College, Vinikonda, Gunto District. In this video lecture, you are going to learn about tricholosis. Before that, we must know what is cellular respiration. Cells in higher organisms conduct cellular respiration with the help of mitochondria. By that, they produce energy coins such as ATP molecule, which are essential for carrying out all metabolic activity, activities by other cell organelles present in the cell. The cellular respiration is different from regular respiration process. Respiration is of mainly two types, aerobic type of respiration and anaerobic type of respiration. Aerobic type of respiration takes the help of oxygen, whereas anaerobic respiration doesn't require oxygen molecules. But glycolysis is the common process in both aerobic and anaerobic type of respiration. In aerobic respiration, we can see three different phases. They are glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport system. Before learning the complete details of glycolysis, we must know the structure of mitochondria. Mitochondria are all known as cell furnace or energy liberators or powerhouse of the cells because in higher organisms, this mitochondria conduct respiration so that they release ATP molecules essential for the growth and development of the cell and to carry out all type of metabolic activities. Mitochondria are the higher cell organelles as they are enclosed by two membranes. They are outer membrane and inner membrane. The space between the two membranes is called perichondrial space. In an inner membrane, you can see small infoldings inside the mitochondria. They are called cristae foldings. On the cristae foldings, you can see filament-like structures called oxygens or F1 particles which are present distinctly maintaining equal distance between them. The inner cavity in the mitochondria is called matrix where you can see all the respiratory enzymes, mitochondrial DNA, ribosomes, etc. Generally, in aerobic respiration, glycolysis takes place outside the mitochondria, that is cytosol, whereas the Krebs cycle takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria, and the electron transport system is done on the inner foldings of the mitochondria. They are cristae foldings. After learning the structure of mitochondria, we must know the introductory aspects of glycolysis. Glycolysis is actually, it was described by James in 1971 as basic respiration. It is also called as hexose diphosphate pathway and Emden may have Paranus pathway shortly EMP pathway. Since glycolysis was discovered by three different scientists, Emden, Meyerhaf and Paranus, take the first letters from their names. It is named after them as EMP pathway. It is actually a pathway of 10 different reactions. It's not a cycle at all. The literal meaning of glycolysis is conversion of complex glucose molecule into simple 3 carbon substances such as pyruvic acids. So one glucose molecule is broken down into two pyruvic acid molecules. So glucose is lysed into two pyruvic acid molecules. It occurs in the cytosol of the cell. It is also called common process in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. It consists of 10 reactions actually. For better comprehension, glycolysis must be classified into three different parts so that we can easily 
understand it and we can remember it and we can rewrite the same at the time of examinations without any fear. First of all, in the first part we have to learn the 10 different reactions. What are the 10 different reactions we can see in the glycolysis? They are phosphorylation, first one, second one, isomerization, third one, phosphorylation, fourth one, cleavage, fifth one, isomerization, sixth one, oxidation, seventh reaction, dephosphorylation, eighth reaction, intramolecular shift, ninth reaction, dehydration, and the tenth reaction is dephosphorylation. These are the 10 steps we can see in the glycolysis. And the substrates we can see in all these 10 reactions are like this. Glucose, glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1,6-biphosphate, GAP and DAP. GAP means glyceraldehyde phosphate, whereas DAP means dihydroxy stone phosphate. These are two triage molecules which can be changed into one to another. That is, GAP can be changed into DAP and DAP can be changed into GAP. And then by 13 by PZA, 3 PZA, 2 PZA, PEP, that means phosphoenolpyruvic acid and pyruvic acid. So these are 10 different substances or substrates we can see in each and every reaction of the glycolysis. Then the enzymes involving in these reactions are kinase, first one is, second one is isomerase, third one is kinase, fourth one is aldolase, fifth one is isomerase. 6th one is dehydrogenase, 7th one is kinase, 8th one is mutage, 9th one is enolage and again 10th we can see kinase. So here if you observe clearly the first reaction is done under control of kinase enzyme and similarly the 10th reaction. One thing you must remember. When kinase is the enzyme in a reaction, you can understand that there must be the formation of ATP or utilization of ATP. When you see an enzyme like dehydrogenase, you can call the reaction as oxidation reaction. When you see the change from one form to another form, both must be equal forms, then that must be isomerase uh, enzyme which is involved in the reaction and the reaction is called isomerization. If you learn any process like this, it is very easy for you to remember it and there is no confusion at all for you while writing the uh, in the examinations. So better you learn the glycolysis such way. First of all, you have to write the 10 reaction names and then the 10 substrates and the 10 enzymes. Then you have to write the 10 equations separately considering the reaction name in the substrate involving in it and the enzyme. The, the first reaction in the glycolysis is conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of an enzyme kinase and the reaction is called phosphorylation. Why it is called phosphorylation here? In the glucose we can see 6 carbons. Because of this phosphorylation reaction, the phosphate ion that is taken from ATP is added to the 6th carbon of the glucose. Then it is changed to glucose 6-phosphate. You have to describe the reaction and you have to write the reaction. And the second reaction is isomerization. Here, glucose 6-phosphate is changed into the equal form of, of it, that is fructose 6-phosphate. Hence, this is called isomerization reaction and the enzyme is isomerase. Here, magnesium ions behave like cofactors in this reaction. And the third reaction is also called phosphorylation reaction. Why it is called phosphorylation here? When ATP is utilized. So the phosphate ion from ATP is added to the fructose 6-phosphate. The new phosphate ion is added to the first carbon of fructose because it already has a phosphate ion at 6th carbon and now the new one is added to the first carbon so that it becomes fructose 1, 6 by phosphate, two phosphate ions, one is at 6th carbon, another one is at the 1st carbon. It is done, under, uh, done by the enzyme kinase. And the fourth reaction is cleavage, that means breaking down. Fructose 1, 6 by phosphate is broken down into two triose molecules, which are similar actually. They are glyceraldehyde phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. 
and this reaction is called cleavage and enzyme is aldolase. These two forms are of similar type but however glyceraldehyde phosphate directly involves in the further reactions of glycolysis whereas a DAP cannot involve like that. So that DAP must be changed to GAP in order to continue the process of glycolysis. First we take GAP. So five reactions have been completed. Up to these five reactions uh, uh, we can see these reactions only once in the entire pathway. But from 6th to 10th reactions, last 5 reactions take place twice in the total pathway. You must remember that. Then in the 6th reaction that is called oxidation reaction, this glyceraldehyde phosphate changes into 1,3 by PGA, by phosphoglyceric acid. Here the enzyme is dehydrogenase. Here, one hydrogen is removed so that the oxidized NADP is changed into reducer type that is NADH2. One thing you must remember, while writing photosynthetic um, pathways or uh, cycles, you must uh, write uh, as NADPH2 over there. But here in respiration, we must uh, write that as NADH. What is the difference between these two? Both NADH and NADPH are coenzymes. But NADH is present in the cell in a low quantities than that of the NADPH2. And another thing is NADH2 is, DH2 is seen in respiration whereas NADPH2 is seen in photosynthesis. In other words, NADH2 is seen in the catabolic processes like, like uh, respiration whereas NADPH2 is seen in the anabolic reactions like photosynthesis. NADH2 doesn't show phosphate ions with it, whereas uh, NADPH2 is with the phosphate ions. So these are the major differences between the NADH2 and FAT, uh, NADPH2. Here we have to write as NADH2 only. This is the sixth reaction that is called oxidation reaction. Here when NADH2 is formed and the enzyme is dehydrogenase. In the seventh reaction, this is called dephosphorylation reaction. Why it is called dephosphorylation here? Phosphate ion is removed from the 1,3 by PGA so that it is liberated in the form of ATP molecule. Hence, this is called dephosphorylation and the enzyme is called kinase enzyme. And the product is 3-PGA, 3-phosphoglyceric th acid. And then 8th reaction. In the 8th reaction, the 3-PGA is changed into 2-PGA. What happened here? The uh, carbon, uh, the, ph the phosphate ion present in the uh, present at the third carbon is shifted to the second carbon. That is why it is called intramolecular shift. The reaction is called intramolecular shift and the enzyme is the mutage. And the product we get is 2-PVA, 2 phosphoglyceric 2 acid. And then the ninth reaction, that is called dehydration reaction. That means here, hydrogens uh, are uh, removed in the form of water molecule. Hence the reaction is called dehydration. And here the substrate is 2 phosphoglyceric acid and the product is the phosphoenol pyruvic acid. It happens in the presence of an enzyme enolase. And the 10th reaction, this is the last reaction where phosphoenol pyruvic acid is changed into pyruvic acid molecule, a 3 carbon molecule. Here also phosphate ion is removed from PEP so that one ATP is released. Here the enzyme is the kinase. So this, so that it, uh, this reaction is called dephosphorylation reaction. Here in the 7th and 10th uh, we, uh, we are getting two ATP molecules. Here the energy is liberated directly in its uh, in the required form that is ATP. As ATP are directly released in these two reactions, these two reactions are called substrate level phosphorylation reactions both 7th and 10th. When you consider the total gain of ATP in the glycolysis, in the first and third reactions, two ATP are utilized. In the sixth reaction, one NADH2 is formed. Actually, sixth, from sixth reaction to tenth reactions, reaction, all these reactions take place twice. That is why we can consider two NADH2. Generally, one NADH2 is equal to three ATP, but the NADH2 which is formed in the cytosol is equal to 2 ATP only. That is why 2 NADH2 that are formed in the glycolysis at the 6th step must be equal to 4 ATP. 
in uh, 7th and 10th reactions two ATP are directly released as these reactions take place twice they are equal to 4 ATP thus the, the total gain of ATP the gross gain of ATP in glycolysis is 8 ATP but when you, when you consider the net gain we had to uh, uh, detect two ATP that are consumed in the first and third reactions from this gross gain so that, so that we will get 6 ATP so 6 ATP means it is a net gain of glycolysis so, so gross gain is 8 ATP net gain is 6 ATP 7th and 10th reactions are called substrate level phosphorylation reactions because where ATP are directly released but a 6th reaction ATP are not directly released instead NADH2 are released they must be changed into ATP later on by electron, uh, during electron transport system. So, before winding up this uh, video lecture, I would like to recall the important points of glycolysis. Glycolysis is a common process present in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. It is carried out as, a, uh, as part of uh, cellular respiration. Cellular respiration uh, is of two types, aerobic and anaerobic. Generally, higher organisms show aerobic type of, uh, type of respiration. The aerobic respiration is broadly classified into three different phases. They are glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport system. Glycolysis is also called basic respiration or hexodiphosphate pathway or EMP pathway. It includes 10 reactions which takes place in a stepwise manner. The net gain of glycolysis is 6 ATP. Glycolysis takes place in the cytosol. Thank you for your patient listening. I hope I have followed the total lecture and all the details. We will meet in the other video. Till then bye. Have a nice day. Thank you.